Hey, what's up everybody? My name is Trophinet, the babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Fallout 4. It's been over a year and a half since I originally started the gunless playthrough of Fallout 4, where we tried to go through the game without using a single gun. Uh, and that is still an option. Uh, I've left that series off about a year ago, since a lot of other games started coming out. And if you saw my Trophinet update video a while, well, last week then uh, I already asked this question but I'm hesitating whether I should do a completely new playthrough of Fallout 4 in survival mode or if I continue the gunless playthrough since I haven't really gotten any reaction on that video I'm just gonna go ahead and do uh, the first video of my Fallout 4 survival playthrough what survival means is that it's technically the hardest difficulty in the game but it's a very cool way of doing a highest difficulty in a game. Because purely looking at the numbers, survival mode is actually a bit easier than very hard. Meaning that the damage you do is actually higher than on very hard. The caveat is, is that there's a lot more stuff that we need to take into account. We need to take into account that we need to be well fed, well rested, well hydrated over the course of the game. And we can only save when we're at a bed. So there's no quick saving, no saving in between anything else. So everything is a lot more dangerous. Aside from us being able to do more damage, the enemies also do more damage than on the very hard difficulty, if I'm not mistaken. Aside from that, there's a lot of other modifiers that's been applied to the game if we're playing on survival, but we'll go through those once we're in the game itself. But before we head in, I wanted to ask you guys a few questions. If you're new to the channel, let me know uh, how you found this video, because I'm really curious about that. And if you have an opinion on whether you want me to go through the survival mode of Fallout 4 or continue our playthrough with Bob when we're, uh, well, in the gunless playthrough where we're not playing with any sort of projectile weapon, just mainly melee weapons and explosives, then let me know that as well. I try to do as um, thorough as a playthrough as I can. In a game like this, this can be a bit overwhelming, of course, but we're gonna go through this as well, as properly as possible. So uh, let's head straight in. So there we go, I needed to set the game to survival before we started off. So uh, start a new game on survival, here we go. So I'm gonna show you guys as much of the game as I can, which means that I'm gonna suppose that you guys have seen as little of the game as possible, and therefore I'll show you as much as I can. So this includes the starting cinematic. So uh, let's start off with that and enjoy. My great-great-grandfather, serving in the army, wondered when he'd get to go home to his wife and the son he'd never seen. He got his wish when the U.S. ended World War II by dropping atomic bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The world awaited Armageddon. Instead, something miraculous happened. We began to use atomic energy not as a weapon, but as a nearly limitless source of power. People enjoyed luxuries once thought the realm of science fiction. Domestic robots, fusion-powered cars, portable computers. But then, in the 21st century, people awoke from the American dream. Years of consumption led to shortages of every major resource. The entire world unraveled. Peace became a distant memory. 
It is now the year 2077. We stand on the brink of total war. And I am afraid. For myself. For my wife. For my infant son. Because of my time in the army taught me one thing. It's that war... War never changes. War never changes. So the beginning cinematic kinda assumes that you're gonna play as a male character, which is not something we're gonna do. Because we're gonna play as... Louise! Welcome, Louise! So there we go. This is our character that we're gonna use... Well, we're gonna play as in the Fallout 4 survival, so a female character. Last time we did Bob, so I feel like this time we should go with a female character. Uh, Hellbent on survival. She's been attacked by a tabby cat once in her life, which uh, gave her this nasty scar on her face, but otherwise she's a tough woman ready to face the harsh survival world of Fallout 4. Hi Nate. Hi Nate, so I think that's the default name they give the male character, Nate. Um, so let's go into, oh, I totally, it's been a while since I played Fallout 4. I thought the kitchen was over to the other side. Ah, good morning, mum. Your coffee, 173.5 degree Fahrenheit, brewed to perfection. And today's newspaper just delivered. There we go, so let's drink our coffee. That was a weird animation, but I think we just drank from a distance. Hey, hun. Wow, look at you. How'd a guy like me ever get so lucky, huh? You're not looking at me, buddy. You are not looking at me at all. You haven't batted an eye. You're still looking at that newspaper. Hey, buddy, look at me. Uh, it's that salesman again. I don't know why he keeps bothering you. Well, let's find out, Nate. Let's find out what he wants from us. Open up the door. Good morning. vault calling. Hello, sir. You can't begin to know how happy I am to finally speak with you. I've been trying for days. It's a matter of utmost urgency, I assure you. Uh, well, we're here now. I'm here now. So you are. So you are. I'm here today to tell you that because of your family service to our country, you have been pre-selected for entrance into the local vault. Vault. One eleven. Oh my god. Sounds great. Oh, it is. Believe you me. Now, you're already cleared for entrance in the unforeseen event of uh, total atomic annihilation. <laughs> I just need to verify some information. That's all. Okay. Do uh, tell me more. Tell me more about this vault. Oh, it has all the amenities of the modern home, I assure you. Not to mention total protection from nuclear radiation and hostile mutants. So I love how he already mentions mutants at this point, while since we're before the events of the atomic war. Um, so it's a bit weird that he already knows about mutants, but uh, yes. So our first big choice, of course, getting ourselves a name, we already know that. There we go, Louise. I don't actually know if that's a default name. Just check the list. Sadly, Louise is not a default name, so Coltsworth won't be able to tell us that. But there's a whole bunch of names that's actually worked into Fallout 4 that Coltsworth can actually say, uh, depending on which one you enter here. But the form is free form, so you can enter whatever name you want, even non-existing ones. And uh, But if you select one of that list, he'll actually say that one out loud. Now onward we have, of course, the seven stats, the special stats, uh, going from strength, perception, endurance, charisma, intelligence, agility, and luck. So I'm going to set this up a bit and I'll skip right ahead. So this is what we're going to start with. The reasoning for this is going to become apparent. I think I might even go this. Um, the reason for that is I want to go into a critical build which means that I want to build up critical shots as quickly as possible and use that to maximize my damage output. Maximize damage output means that I will be hit the least as possible. And since critical hits always hit directly, we'll see that later on in combat, that seems like the safest option for a survival build. 
Otherwise, from that, we'll go from top to bottom. So strength four, which, which means I think we can get... Um, what can we get there? I think we might be able to get strong... No, armor. Armor. That's why I want to go with that. Armor, so we can make some deep pockets. Armor, since survival also severely limits our carry capacity. So strength is a measure of your raw physical power. It affects how much you can carry and the damage of all melee attacks. We won't be doing much many melee attacks here because of course the closer we get to our enemies the dangerous the more dangerous it will become but it is important for our carry weight since we still need to uh, carry a few things along with us now perception two perception is your environmental awareness and sixth sense and affects weapon accuracy in vats uh, our compass is going to be almost completely useless in survival because survival also limits the range of your compass so no enemy markers no um well points of interest marked unless you're really really close so boosting that up is pretty useless unless i want to go for rifleman which is gonna be uh, one of the only perks i want to go into in perception but i just need two more points in perception if i want to get that and rifles aren't really uh, abundant in the beginning of the game. Then endurance at three. Endurance is a measure of your overall physical fitness. It affects your total health and the action point drain from sprinting. So important stat, especially for survival, but it uh, is still about my survivability at that point. I do want to avoid getting hit in total, so endurance is less important than agility and luck will be. Then we have Charisma a tree, just because we want to get the Lone Wanderer perk. So I'm going to try and avoid making this easier with companions. So Charisma is your ability to charm and convince others. It affects your success to persuade in dialogue and prices when you barter. Um, so that's why I don't even go that higher than three there. Then Intelligence at two. Intelligence is going to be important. Intelligence uh, defines how much experience so intelligence is a measure of your overall mental acuity and affects the number of experience points gain earned but we're gonna go with a specific burn perk idiot savant that will allow us to occasionally get a uh, multiple well a multiplication of our experience gained depending on how low our intelligence is we do want to get high intelligence later on because of course the gun nut and uh, scientist perks are both in intelligence and we do want to start tinkering with our weapons sooner rather than later but still intelligence at two although i might i think armor unlocks at three so i might actually just want to go to three at just across the board aside from perception um yeah let's do it like that then agility agility is a measure of your overall finesse and reflexes reflexes it affects your, the number of action points in vats and your ability to sneak vats is the automatic targeting system in uh fallout 4 and in fallout in general starting from uh, fallout 3 so vats stands for volt tech assisted targeting system which will allow us to slow down the game and aim from afar, which will help us to get those critical hits as well. And then luck. Luck is a measure of your general good fortune and affects the recharge rate of critical hits, but also uh, increases the odds of us getting ammo and health items and food items, which is going to be very important in survival since we're going to need to find food and ammo to just keep going because those drop rates have also been uh, severely reduced in survival. So that's our build, 3233368. Wonderful. That's everything. Uh, just gonna walk this over to the vault. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. And there we go. Thanks again. I don't think you can hear us through a closed door. That's worth a little paperwork, right? For you and Sean, no price is too high. <laughs> Good answer. I have my moments. And then we can hear Sean crying again. Cotsworth coming. Oh, he does! But he absolutely refuses to calm down. I think he needs some of that maternal affection you seem to be so good at. <laughs> Go ahead, honey. I'll be there in a second to help, okay? He said my name! That was awesome. I thought I just checked the list, but apparently. See, he says it! Yeah, 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 Godsworth, I'm just excited that you know my name, because I thought you weren't going to be able to say my name. But, Sean, let's tickle our little boy, because we have a son, Sean. There we go, tickle, tickle, tickle. Hey, I fixed that mobile on his crib the other day. Why don't you give it a spin? Look at that stance, our 
gorgeous husband over there. So let's spin that around, round, round it goes. He's really happy with that, isn't he? That's my boy on his best behavior, just like his dad. Well, most of the time anyway. Listen, after breakfast, I was thinking we could head to the park for a bit. Weather should hold up. So this is cool. The dialogue options also actually change depending on, well, in this conversation at least, change depending on whether you go with a male or a female character. And, uh, well, the sarcastic option is really fun when you're playing as a woman. Oh, right. The park. With you. Because I want to get pregnant again. Sir? Mom? That was, I mean, I how much of a burn can you get? What's wrong? But then Cotsworth starts panicking and we need to head back to the living room. Yes, followed by flashes, blinding flashes, sounds of explosions. We're uh, trying to get confirmation. We Wait, seem to have what? lost contact with what our affiliate stations. Oh no. We do, we do have, we do have coming in. That's um, confirmed reports, I repeat, confirmed reports of nuclear detonations in New York and Pennsylvania. My God. And there we go. Oh my God. The bombs we the are dropping now. and suddenly we're at full let's speed. Go. Let's go. Yes, let's go. But the problem is that I can run a lot faster than Nate can. Um, so I'm just going to show you. This is Sanctuary Hills. This is where we live during all the panic. Um, by the way, if you ignore the army here and walk over there, then you die. <laughs> Which is... Really funny that they've added in that. Also, if you're too slow in here, then the bombs will also drop and you will just straight up die. Just help me pack it up. And there we go, our neighbors. Yeah, who cares? Let's go to the vault. Luckily, the vault is right in our backyard for some reason. You don't get in. I'm going in. You can't stop me. So the salesman can't come in. But we... But we... We can actually go in. We need to get in. We're on the list. Infant, adult male, adult female. Okay, go ahead. And I think that's actually literally the the clipboard that the vault deck was uh, the vault deck grab was holding. Come on! What's gonna happen to all those people outside We're the gate? We're doing everything we can. Now keep moving. And I mean, I do love the intro to Fallout 4. It's really cool. Makes us forget a bit about Fallout 76 as well. So, in the platform, on the platform, in the center, that's a simple instruction. We can do that, no survival needed just yet. Almost there! Is Sean okay? He's fine. We're gonna be okay. I love you. Oh my god! I mean, that bomb has a sense of timing. Hold on! And that officer does some, some self-sacrifice, because he sends it down. Assuming that he just died. But we get into the vault just in time. Everything seems to be working. We made it. We're okay. We are indeed, Nate. Everyone, please step off the elevator and proceed up the stairs in an orderly fashion. No need to worry, folks. I love how he's just... Don't worry about that. Everybody you've ever known is now dead. Just go inside this lovely vault. Come on, buddy. You'll need your suits before we can take you Looks further. Fine. Can I get one? Mr. Abel, move, move, please. He just lingered there for a while. Thanks. Thanks. What now? Just follow the doctor here. He'll show you where to go. All right, you three. Follow me. So for some reason, we get the doctor's attention. Okay, How long do you think we'll be down here? <laughs> oh, we'll be going over all that in orientation. Just a few medical items we have to get through first. Just the ways these people are manipulated into doing this, because the way this is set up is really, really, well, slightly genius, even though these people are horrifying. Horrible. So just, just step in here. Looks perfectly safe, right? Doesn't look like a cryo chamber in any way. Can you come here? Oh. Can you come here? I kind of forgot about that, Nate. No, you're going to have to handle the baby yourself. Nate, hubby, and depressurize you before we head deeper in the vault. Just relax. Time for a whole new life. Resident secure. But then, of course, the computer is a bit of a tattletale at this point. Procedure complete. Because the vault computer just says. Does it actually say? 
Oh no, it doesn't say right now, but of course the screen freezes Three, over. Two, There's the tattletale. Cryogenic stasis suspended, so we were frozen in cryogenic suspension. And we're waking up, but we can't really do anything other than look around. This is the one. Here. Open it. Mysterious figure. So two people approaching Nate and Sean's hold and opening them up. I think. Is it over? Are we okay? Almost. Everything's going to be fine. Come here. No. No. I got it. Let the boy go. I'm only gonna tell you once. I'm not giving you shot. And there we go. What a start to a game, right? At least we still have the backup. And we're the backup. I could swear that you could actually hit the window before, but apparently that's had I been removed around just making things up. Which wouldn't be the first time. And we wake up again. Cause this time Ah, there's the banging. That was what I was remembering. That's just automatic. There we go. So, a critical failure in cryogenic array. All residents need to vacate immediately. And we start the quest out of time. Exit Vault 111. So let's, of course, open up. There has to be a release. Come so on, we can come open on, that up. Oh, God. And then we can check his vital signs, but of course... I'll find who did this. And I'll get Sean back. I promise. So, sadly, we need to leave our husband behind because Nate is of course shot in the face and he's dead um, we can actually find out what happened here uh, right at the beginning because if we want to try and open this up we can't really open up any of the other pods and it seems like they're all dead anyway but we don't need to assume because there's a monitoring terminal over here and you can check that life support is currently offline which means that, yeah, those people are probably not alive anymore. But you can even check the pods separately and every single one of them will be deceased. Asphyxiation due to life support failure. And if you check out uh, Nate's status, it's a known pod door manual override engaged so that we opened it up. And everybody else, I can check that, but everybody else is also dead. So for now, there are no enemies yet, so I might as well move forward normally. Uh, but you can check out... <laughs> A few of the rooms. There's another one, another room with cryopods in the next room over, but over here it's the same story. Everybody's dead and you can even check that at the terminals as well. And they're all dead, as we expected. So, everybody's still dead. You can't really do anything over here and I don't think... There's not a jumpsuit here, but... Hmm, don't really need to pick all of that up, I think. So Fallout 4 actually made, uh, created a system where every piece of junk is actually useful. Every piece of junk you can, kind of like we're doing in Prey right at the moment, there's a giant roach, you can actually turn those items into their basic components and use those components to make something new. And those are giant roaches, which is something Louise has never seen before either. I'm not exactly sure whether the survival part of the game has already kicked in, so I need to take a look at my... I'm actually... I can't even check my status yet, so I would assume it's not already active. But the stem pack, we can use that to actually uh, make ourselves better. And then there's a security terminal, which indicates that indicates that this vault is actually designed to test the long-term effects of suspended animation on unaware human suspects, and that the security staff can't even do well. The staff in general can't even interfere with the uh, experiment for any reason. And if anybody disobeys, the security staff is actually authorized to use lethal force, which is harsh. And the rest of this terminal actually describes what we've been through. So the, they're giving uh, instructions to the staff how to uh, handle the people coming in. So they're put into those cryogenic uh, stuff, cryogenic pods immediately at entering. 
And this is the most important one here, I think, which explains why we were released. So life-saving intervention is only permitted if greater than 80% of the resident population has perished while in cryogenic suspension and must not interrupt suspension otherwise. So that explains why we were the only one released. Everybody else needed to die before the uh, pod would open up immediately. So everybody else just basically suffocated because the life support went away. And the last part on this terminal also gives us a history of what went on with the vault. They started to running, run out of food and that's basically where this thing ended. So a handful of us confronted the overseer about opening up the vault. I never knew a man that small could shout that loud. Now he's locked himself in his office along with the rest of the science staff. We're supposed to hand over any food, weapons and medicine we have by tonight or there's going to be consequences. I've talked to everyone. It's time, one way or another, we're getting out of this vault. So eventually things heated, started to heat up and uh, everybody on the staff rebelled against the overseer and the scientific staff just trying to get out of the vault since nobody tried to well came to get them out as well because of course everybody was dead the bombs dropped so nobody was coming back for them so then we entered this room and we get our first enemy a rad roach if we sneak up a little closer you can actually get the security baton on the left here and then hit this thing in the face and that gives us our first bit of rad roach meat. What? Wait. Roaches. Rad roach meat. What the hell? I'm having trouble with words already. That's a problem. But then this room is very, very important because we're going to start to need uh, water. And I think the water in the vault is still pure, if I'm not mistaken. Because if you gather up empty bottles, you can actually fill those up with water. That's one of the hidden mechanics in Fallout 4. So if you then go to, for example, the sink, and if you fill the bottle, we get purified water. There we go. So this is purified water, which is definitely going to help. So I'm going to fill up all my bottles I've gathered, so we have a bit of purified water to start survival with. That gave us about six or seven uh, of those. So as long as we have a source of purified water, we can actually make bottles of those uh, as well to help us out. This is a bed, so that's where we can save at, as I said before. And otherwise, we just need to gather a few items here. Found a few more bottles, but otherwise nothing useful. So let's head through this door, which gets us into a room with more roaches. Uh, they can get electrified by the generator in the middle here, so if we can let them be killed by that, that would be nice. There we go, there's, there's one that goes. That's just the one that's there, just to show you how lethal that generator is, so you need to go around. Smack this rat roach if it wants to stand still for a second. And there we go, so it didn't take a hit just yet, which is nice, because I don't actually know how much damage I'm going to take if I'm going to hit by a, a simple rad roach. Not even want to try that either. Then we get over here, and this actually shows us the way to power attack. There we go. And there we go, so they... That second one was actually close enough to probably hit me. So adrenaline is increasing your damage. Stay awake and get more kills to increase the bonus. So that's what uh, survival also adds. So adrenaline. Our adrenaline goes up with each kill we actually get. And the kills actually... Adrenaline gives us an extra boost to attack power. But it goes away once we sleep. So once we save, we lose our damage bonus. So that's a bit of a a trade-off we'll have to make and the cool thing about Fallout 4 is in my mind is that it doesn't actually take that long to uh, well finish what up the introductory mean? mission so we just have these few rooms we're straight into the overseer office which is this uh, over here and we can take the 10 millimeter pistol with 50 rounds so that's 62 uh, bullets that we're going to be able to use for the remainder of the well the first few rounds of this game because as i said ammo is going to be really really sparse so we're going to be running out of ammo quickly oh that's a lucky drop so that's luck for for you right there so antibiotics is something you can use to cure off diseases because of course things weren't hard enough in survival already if we eat bad food or we sleep out in the open that's 24 more bullets if we sleep out in the open, we actually uh, get a chance of getting a disease. A disease can be uh, selected at random from a list ranging from pretty harmless to pretty detrimental. There's one that actually damages you continually over time. 
which uh, could be a big problem. And right over there you have the Cryolator, which is a fancy weapon that actually freezes enemies. But uh, other than that, we can't really do anything with it because it's locked at, a, well, behind a master lock. So that is that. So 118 bullets is actually pretty nice. That's probably because of luck. Uh, I haven't seen any other... Ooh, bobby pin, definitely. And the pre-war money, definitely as well. Because um, ammo is going to be sparse, as I said, so that's why I wanted to go with luck. And I'm not regretting that in the slightest, but I don't seem to find any more empty bottles. But we do get glasses here as well. And if we, we're going to do that uh, in a second, because we can't really access the inventory yet. So let's check the Overseer's Terminal. And the Cryolator is explained here as well. So the cryo gun is an experimental weapon that's of course created in the same vault that experiments with cryo, um, well, cryo technology in it in general. So that kind of makes sense. So Vault 111 was defined as a short term assignment. So over 180 days you can stay in here, but after that you should be getting out and this terminal also makes it clear that the overseer needed to get an all clear message from Voltec if he wanted to open up the door because Voltec would monitor the hazards outside such as radiation levels, enemy invasion, subsequent attacks and other factors. So that explains why the overseer was reluctant to open up the vault. The overseer's logs also indicate that there were multiple technical failures in the vault before we actually just got out and he was Really excited to see how people would react when they were pushed forward in time because we were sleeping for that long. Um, but that was the first thing to happen that was starting to become a problem. Other than that, he didn't get the all clear message. Supplies were running low and of course people were starting to freak out. Because uh, as you can see at the bottom, I don't know what to do. I can't open the vault. I can't expect our supplies to last forever. I just have to keep everything under control until the all clear. And then the final message. The mutiny, a faction led by the security personnel, have turned on me, demanding they be allowed to leave the vault. Idiots, I will not open the door to be irradiated to death out there. I'm consolidating the remaining supplies, putting the staff on lockdown, and we're going to have to start prioritizing who deserves that what little food we have left. I've been too damn generous with the rations. If people don't like it, well, that's fewer mouths to feed. So he... Resorted to extreme violence, killing off the people in the vault, the staff that he was working with. But eventually, he died right here as well. Is this all that's left? So they turned into skeletons, which is also an indication of how long we've been into cryogenic uh, suspension there. If we open up got this the door, we can't open it up because, of course, the terminal uh, allows you to open up the overseer tunnel. There we go. I'm just going to get my pistol out. And there we have a few uh, rad roaches in the tunnel. But now that we have a projectile weapon, we can actually take care of that with a few well-aimed shots. There we go. And then, ooh, there's more coming from. There we go. I'm going to make my, a name for myself again. Uh, yeah, like that, definitely. There's one more over there. There we go. There we go. I'm, I'm a, I mean, if you've watched my other videos, you know I'm a horrible shot. I don't know why it's just, just that. Yeah, okay, there we go. Wanted to get rid of the quick select menu there. And it's been a while. I need to get rid of, uh, get used to most of the controls again. Because, of course, as logical as this game is, triangle is jumping, which doesn't make any sense. I'm going to accidentally jump a few times. To expect me to do that quite a few times. It actually is apparent, because I've played the beginning of this game quite a few times, it is apparent how little loot there is lying around. Please, for, for fuck's sake, just kill that. I think there's another one. Is it underneath that corpse over there? But that seems to be every... Oh, there's that fucking... No, no, no. Ow, 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 ow. Fuck you. Jesus Christ, that was problematic. Did I just contract an illness? The game was telling me something, um, but I can't really check anything. I got stuck there. That was a great start and I completely whiffed on all those shots. And yes, I kept shooting on purpose there, but there we go. We can get the Pip-Boy over here and uh, yeah, the iconic Pip-Boy, so the hand computer. And there goes the arm, very dramatic. And we can put that on, wipe the screen a bit uh, cleaner there. And get snapping. We're going to see the screen quite a lot, of course, because this is a, a Fallout game. But, uh, of course, I'm going to cut all of that out, usually. But there we go. 
So the only status effect I seem to have is the adrenaline, so we get a 10% boost to our damage, which is nice. I did take about 32 damage because of that single rad roach, which is uh, a sign of things to come. Uh, and I just got the second rank of adrenaline, so there we go. 5% bonus, bonus damage per adrenaline rank. You gain ranks by killing enemies, but lose ranks while sleeping. I could try and heal myself off already, but that's not really necessary. I'm going to put on the glasses, which gives us one point in um, perception. And then if you want to, we can also equip the vault tech lab coat, which gives us no protection instead of the uh, 5 energy and 10 radiation protection from the jumpsuit. But we do get two points into intelligence. I'm not going to do anything with that just yet. So that's that. And now we can use the pip boy to open up the vault door. Which for some reason this science guy was just not allowed to do that. Probably got killed by the rat roaches. And then we can uh, press the button. Or maybe the overseer killed him. And there we go. The music kicking in. And we get the iconic opening sequence of the vault door. Which is really elaborate. I really, really like it. Just... Puts you at ease, well not at ease, but prepares you for what you're going to see outside. Because basically, we're doing the reverse of what we've already seen. Because um, we, this is the, well, we've gone down into the vault, which compared to Fallout 3, we never even saw the outside of the vault before we started the game. And this is uh, kind of like a reverse, reverse, hello, let me go, yeah, there we go. So the reverse of what we started with, so we can open that up. And under... The guidance of this great introductory music. The elevator is coming down automatically still after all this time. But you can see uh, in the infrastructure itself as well that it's really, really rusted all of a sudden. If you compare it to before, like half an hour ago probably, uh, it looks a lot worse. So let's get up. There we go. So we can change anything, everything if we want to, but I think we're pretty much finished. Let's head into survival. And then we're going up. The blinding light for a person that's been underground for what seems to be only an hour. But the world looks a lot, a lot worse than it did before. I love how you're still blurred when you're coming out. And then everything comes into focus. And it's gone. Most of the world is gone. Although the houses are more intact than I would, than I would suspect when a bomb... Of that caliber goes off and in the distance you can see like a church and then a big city a water tower it's a lovely sight to behold isn't it but no time to lose because of course we're starting to get hungry we're starting to get sick um not sick uh, thirsty maybe but we're not sick yet I'm just gonna pull out my gun because uh that's a rat away that's a good start that claw hide i can actually use otherwise empty bottles as I said, empty bottles. I'm not actually sure if you can actually go back down. Can you go back down? I'm not sure. I never actually tried that. You probably can. Although I don't know how. Because you can get the cryolator back, I suppose. And since that water is purified, that might be interesting. But a lot of the game right now for us hinges on what's in these few boxes. Another Radaway. Fair enough. And then we have another Radaway. And a cooking pan, that's not great. And another rat away in a Brahmin scum, skull. That is... Hmm. Not a great start. We haven't found a single piece of extra food yet. Uh, and this is how I'm going to play most of the game, by the way. I'm going to try to stay in stealth, because of course we want to avoid getting attacked. Uh, ah, that's good. Cram, and then of course a desk fan for some screws. You get a bottle cap and more bullets. Seven more bullets, that's fine. So we're back over a hundred. And when we get to the gate that was locked off before, that was guarded, we can see all the people that died while they were waiting in front of the gate, trying to get in desperately. But apparently the guys in power armors survived because the power armor isn't really here. We get a few introductory tutorial messages as well. I'm just gonna follow them along. I keep pressing circle to run. I think that's the problem with switching games so much as I do, as much as I do. I'm not going to gather any of those flowers because we can't really do anything with that. But let's head into Sanctuary again. And there we go. Sanctuary, we get a bit of experience discovering any new location as well. 
still not enough to get us onto the next level. Because if your intelligence is high enough, you usually get your first level up over here. Uh, but not at the moment. Mailbox is still empty. I'm going to have to ch check the houses here as well. I'm going to try to do as little building as possible, because that's going to just slow everything down as well. But Godsworth is still alive. As I live and breathe. Oh, it's, it's really you. Yes, it is really us. Um, what happened? Things will be so much more exciting with you and Sir back. Where is your better half, by the by? He has an extra breeding hole, sadly, so um, they killed him. Love these things you're saying, these and then we got the lovely indication that we need to find a bed if we want to save, because any saving is uh, disabled. Calm this, this dire mood. It's been ages since we've had a proper family activity. Checkers, or, or perhaps charades. Oh, Sean does so love that game. <laughs> Is, is the lad uh, with you? No, sadly he's been kidnapped, Goldsworth. We want to been... do anything about that. It's worse than I thought. Mm -hmm. You're suffering from hunger-induced paranoia. Not eating properly for 200 years will do that, I'm afraid. <laughs> uh, and there we go, the first indication that we've been um, sleeping in cryogenic suspension for 200 years. A bit over 210, actually, Mum. Give or take a little for the Earth's rotation and some minor dings to the old chronometer. <laughs> that means you're uh, two centuries late for dinner. <laughs> Perhaps I can whip you up a snack. You must be famished. I mean, um, you okay, Codsworth? We can actually try and do a persuade uh, check here, but I'm assuming we're going to fail this. Codsworth, you're acting... A little weird. What's wrong? I, oh, it actually worked. That I, gives us a bit more experience as well. Mum, it's been just horrible. Two centuries with no one to talk to, no one to serve. I spent the first ten years trying to keep the floors waxed, but nothing gets our nuclear fallout. From and there we go. We're tired. Great. about the futility of dusting a collapsed house and the car the car how do you polish rust this was one of my favorite bits of dialogue at the beginning of the game just calls with losing its shit over uh getting everything clean all the time um stay with me i suppose i i did find this hollow tape i believe sir was going to present it to you as a, as a surprise. But then, well, everything happened. Okay, so uh, thank you. Thank you, Codsworth. You're, you're welcome. I no, love the... the no, just just the idea of a robot sniffling. Together, sir and young Sean may turn up yet. Ha, dude, he's dead. Sir is definitely dead. Sean is... Have you listened to anything we've been saying, Codsworth? Stop crying. And there he goes. So now we need to check out Sanctuary and kill off a few things right here. But we are already tired, which means that we have a bit less action points than we should have. And action points are what we use in VATS. I think there are already enemies over here. I think he's killing them, though. Did you kill? Come on, I need the experience, Goldsworth. I will uh, just go to there myself, because I know they're just flying over there. I've played this introductory mission enough to know that, so I'm just gonna sneak in, and that's fats for you. I think, yeah, there we go. No, not, not the legs. The torso. No, 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 don't fire, don't fire, don't fire. There we go, I think I just got him before he fired off. Uh, I think there's two more. Quick, there we go. And that just gives you a percentage chance to hit. Please. Did that actually kill him? Doesn't seem like that killed him. But, I mean, we can still count on Coldsworth there. Okay. Killed the insects. I only killed one of them, but... I mean, Coldsworth did a good job. Sean's out there, Codsworth. 
I need to find him. What about Concord, Mum? Plenty of people there. And last I checked, they only pummeled me with sticks a few times before I had to run back home. Um, oh, okay. I like these people already. Oh, good. Maybe you'll get along then and they can help you find young Sean. I shall remain here. I love the sarcastic options. So, now we need to investigate Concord, which is a ways off. So we need to prepare ourselves a bit before we head over there. And preparations means that we need to do a few things over here. So let's gather a few items and I'll get back to you once I see anything interesting. Oh, another antibiotics in the mirror. And another interesting thing that I wanted to talk about is in um, survival mode, you don't actually have the most important thing of all, fast travel. So I need to plan out my route really, really careful here. I'm already stuck again. For fuck's sake, there we go. Um, so there's no fast travel at all. So in stark contrast to other playthroughs, I'm going to be rarely returning to Sanctuary. So I'm not going to be building anything here. I'm not going to be doing anything particularly of use here, aside from getting what I can, making a few bits of food, and then moving on. Because the quicker I can get to the center of the map, the quicker I can make a base right there, which is going to be easier for me to do, uh, well, as a base of operations to go and do missions from. And there we open up that, and that gives us a bit of ammo. So that's also changed. Ammo now weighs something, which is also interesting. I'm going to leave the .38 rounds there and just grab the 10mm rounds. The pipe pistol would come in handy later on, but the pre-war money is still nothing, and shotgun shells are really, really heavy. Uh, I'm going to take them with me, just on the off chance I find a shotgun, that would be nice. Uh, and I think that was just not enough experience to get us over to the next level. Because of all those extra rules and the limited carry capacity, I'm also taking a lot less items with me. Only the bare essentials, the bare essentials to keep me alive and keep me combat ready, uh, which is going to become more and more important. But first things first. We need to rest, but the problem with resting is that time actually goes further, so logically. But that also means that we're, we're going to become dehydrated, we're going to need food every time we rest as well. So we need to be really careful about when we actually rest. Tired is not a problem just yet, we need to get probably to the next part of that if we want to do anything else. And there we go, we're parched as well, dropping down more so we can actually check that out. If we check out our status, uh, we can check the effects. So now we lose uh, action point refresh by 5% and we lose one point in intelligence because of our water level. Um, every piece of medication also reduces, well, dehydrates us further. But the most important item is over here. We can actually get the Perfect. Grognak the Barbarian. I'm going to take that. I don't think that still weighs anything. But underneath Sean's uh, cupboard over here is the Your Special book which allows us to pick one more attribute to improve even further. Uh, the one attribute I want to improve even further is probably going to be luck. Yeah, it's going to be luck. There we go. Luck even further. Um, and that's that. That's the most important item in the, in the beginning area in Sanctuary. Otherwise, continue the raid. And there we go. Opening up that safe bumps us up to level 2, which is going to be nice because the first thing we're going to take now. I need to actually grab that right now. So this is the perk chart. We got a whole bunch of perks. Every stat has actually 10 perks with multiple levels attached to those as well. Uh, and you can actually put your perk points into your stats as well to boost those up. So luck is 9 at the moment, um, which is good. So that gets us the better criticals uh, stuff immediately. Uh, ricochet is something I don't really want, but four leaf clover is... Uh, interesting as well. So we're going to be focusing on these perks as soon as possible, but the first thing we need to do is take Idiot Savant. You're not stupid, just different, randomly receive three times the experience from any action, and the lower your intelligence, the greater the chance. There we go. And we got that. So uh, every few times you'll hear that weird noise, and uh, that will indicate that we're going to get that we just got triple the experience for stuff like that. If that happens at the end of a quest, that's gonna be huge everything single time that happens. And now I'm peckish from a lack of food. Food won't be a problem in a second. And I think, oh, I just healed up because of the level up. 
that's nice as well. So I don't even need to heal myself anymore. I think this is another really interesting house because I think there's another safe around here. And now we have this safe, but I need to be careful because I think that safe is even booby trapped. So let's disarm the makeshift bomb and the tension trigger. Okay, there we go. Giving us experience for both. And then I think I'm safe to open up the safe. I still don't get how you open up a safe like that, but well, a bobby pin and a screwdriver, but there we go. And then you can also check out, because this was the house of a drug dealer, which is interesting, but uh, you can check out what this drug dealer has been up to and why there were uh, weapons in his safe. Yeah. And there we go. Idiot Savant triggers on the hack. Which means we got triple the experience from that and that's the only reason why I wanted to open up that safe because I don't think it actually contains anything else. This house is the last one of the town but it has a cooking station but I think that there are... Yeah, there's at least one rad roach over there. Oh, I love the way Idiot Savant sounds when you're playing as a, a woman. That is hilarious. Okay. So that's more rat roach meat and we have the cooking station right over there which we can use. But I'm supposing that's not the only rat roach over here, right? No enemies and no useful items anymore. Oh, wait, there's another safe here but it's advanced locked so I can't open it up with my current skill set. Which is fine. It's fine. Uh, I do want to make food. There we go, cooking station. Let's use that. Craft. So I can make purified water myself still with three dirty waters. I don't know how that works, probably by cooking the water, but it's a bit weird that you can just purify radiation by cooking it. But And a dirty wastelander, which is good for strength, actually. Uh, it doesn't show how much I even get from... Well, how much hydration I get from that, but I can make the baked bloat fly. It doesn't give me any HP. Oh, right. I think you only get HP from food if you're well fed. Uh, which kind of makes sense. Do not make that too easy. So grilled rat roach. And that triggers Idiot Savant a few times as well. That sounds a bit weird if I just spam the button. But uh, there we go. That's the food we can make. And we can also make soup and stuff like that. Gulper slurry. So yeah, I have all the DLC uh, installed as well. We're not going to start that just yet. But... Uh, Interesting nonetheless. So that's that, and that means I could probably eat. I'm gonna first, I think there's usually a few explosives in that trash can. I think this is guaranteed. Yeah, so a few fragmentation grenades. I'm gonna grab that, um, and then I can use those with R1. But for now, I just wanna make a bed. Can I actually just make a bed from here? So I don't even need to go up to the workbench again. So there we go, just a bed under a roof. I don't really need to make, make this um, a lot of fuss out of yeah. this, right? I even get experience from that. I could, I would, should, would, blah, blah, blah. I could actually abuse that system and just gain experience that way, but I'm not gonna do that. So let's sleep in this bed for, I think it's, uh, I don't know what I need for a well rested. Um, but I don't really want to have it dark either, so might as well sleep for 12 hours. There we go. There we go. And that probably, yeah, so thirsty. I do get well rested, but now I'm thirsty from a lack of water. Uh, the only thing I want to again do before we leave across the bridge is make something to get water. Because I think I can do that. Unless they actually removed it from uh, the game in survival mode, but... There's a water pump. Okay, but I need to have some concrete. There's supposed to be cinder blocks around here somewhere. Ah, I get concrete from scrapping the ruined house. So there we go. And then I can just put one... Do I want to put everything right next to the workbench? I should probably. So there we go. Let's grab that. And I think that would allow us if I fill my bottle with that. Is that purified water? Yeah, there we go. Purified water added. And I think if I pump it, I actually drink from it like a normal human being would. But I do have a lot of empty bottles in my uh, workbench here. And if I just pump, I drink that up. Restores health drinking and purified, so still parched. But after that, I think I keep drinking until I don't need to anymore. So there we go. You're properly hydrated. And I could technically heal off everything else, but I don't really need to, I think. There we go. And then last but not least, I need to eat something. 
And if I eat the baked bloat fly, that, wait, am I now? I'm still hungry. Oh, wow. Okay, that's gonna, that's gonna be an issue, right? So now you're, I'm properly fed. Okay. So that is interesting. That is gonna become a problem, but first things first, let's head towards our first stop. First stop being the red rocket station right over there. And once we cross, we get a raider that was unfortunate enough to have to fight against that mutated hound. I think I'm going to take the drifter outfit and the mongrel dog meat. I could take the tire iron, but don't really need it. And then right next to the statue, there's another duffel bag right over here with more ammo and a Molotov cocktail. I'm not going to take the pipe rifle just yet. I'm just hesitating which guns I'm going to use for this. Now I actually picked up a bowler hat, so that adds one point of endurance, which gives us extra health. And then the drifter outfit we just picked up, we can equip that as well. And that goes over our... Well, that's a full outfit, so that removes everything but the glasses and the hat. So you don't uh, wear our jumpsuit anymore. So if I go over here, you can see that I'm just... Yeah, I'm looking very, very fancy. Or don't die. If I just do this, I can actually turn around. Look at that. She looks great, doesn't she? Louise is up and ready to go. And when we get to Red Rocket, of course, this needs to play out as normal. Oh, Jesus Christ. That's going to freak me out more than once, isn't it? And we find dog hey meat. Boy, what are you doing out here all by yourself? You want to come with me, pal? There we go. And we make a new friend immediately. Okay, then. Let's stick together. So now I have a companion, technically. But uh, because this is uh, a game, we're going to get ambushed immediately now. Um, so... I'm a bit nervous about this, but we're prepared enough. Because uh, we're going to get... This is still going to happen, probably. And survival. Hello? Anyone here? The garage just opened up by itself, which is a bit weird. Because this also has a workbench and a weapons bench and everything you possibly need. But I really need to be careful first. Um, hello? Oh, there we go. There's the mole rats. Let's kill them. Um, is there anyone? Oh god. Oh god. There we go. They're all popping up right next to me. And then we can... Oh god, there's a lot of them. Um, um, execute critical. There we go. So that's the power of the criticals. I need to move. 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 Dog meat. Wow, what the hell just happened? There that goes. I think dog meat was just catapulted away. What the hell happened there? Wait. Dog meat? I saw him flying. Oh, there he is. You need to be careful, buddy. Um, stem, stem pack. There we go. Stabbed him in the butt. And I lost the stem pack. Okay. That's, that's not too bad. But you saw that, right? He just flew off. Um, mole rats, but mole rats also have meat. I don't think I even got hit. Oh no, wait, I might have gotten hit, but because of the level up I just got, uh, everything's fine. I just healed up completely. So, mole rats. Creepy little creatures. Naked giant mole rats, dog meat. Dog meat, okay. I'm gonna send you to sanctuary, buddy. The emptiness of the cabinets is really, really apparent. That's really, really weird. Um... So this is another, I mean, there's a lot of drug dealers in this place. Um, so if you check out the Red Rocket Terminal, you can actually read up on uh, a few deliveries gone wrong. So the business entries over here. Um, and there's actually, uh, so the barrels are going in tomorrow in the cave right below the shop. So there's a cave below the shop that we're going to check out in a second. Because it has an interesting item that we're going to need for later on. I'm assuming it's going to be incredibly heavy on this playthrough. Since, of course, stuff is a lot heavier in... Is, is there anything in here? Nope, of course, no food in here. Um, it's gonna be... It's gonna be a lot heavier in this playthrough than in any normal playthrough, otherwise... Oh, another stem pack. Okay, that's great. And then, ooh. Do I take another pipe pistol, just as a reserve? Because I don't... I think those... 
take the 0.38 ammo. Yeah, I'm gonna do so. And as I did in Sanctuary, I'm gonna add another one of these water pumps as well, just to get me some... Uh... No, 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 for fuck's sake, just place it. There we go. So I can just heal up on this if I want to. And I picked up a few more bottles, so that means more purified water. I don't know what the camera is doing right now, but enjoy the scenery. And of course, we can also use a bed, so let's place that over here as well. There we go. So that's another little base of ours set up. If we have a high enough charisma, we can actually start linking those. And that also links the uh, resources you've dropped into the... Well into the workbenches, uh, well, it combines them across all of your outposts. So if you have that, that's gonna become in really handy as well. But right now we can't actually do anything with that, but that's not what I wanted to do. Um, there's also another skill point I need to assign to me. Next thing I wanna actually take is Lone Wanderer, which means I need to get rid of dog meat anyway, but that increases my carry weight capacity by 50. I don't wanna get rid of dog meat just yet. But I don't think it can hurt, because I only need dog meat for just a second. So there we go, Lone Wanderer, you take 15% less damage and carry weight increases by 50. There we go. So the one thing I really need dog meat for is to actually go into that cave that we just read about. So we made a bunch more food items as well, and then we can go around here. Need to be careful, I'm going to take the gas canister as well, because gas canisters are also nice materials-wise. Over here... And we can go into the cave. I'm actually going to take clone fungus as well because we can use that. So, we are inside the cave underneath the red rocket station. Alongside with flying dog meat. Hello, buddy. Um, and now we need to be careful because, of course, there's a lot more mole rats where that came from. There's one over there. That kills that one. We're still in hidden. And there's... Oh, God. Okay, there it is. Uh, I actually have a 72... 3% chance to hit the head, so there we go. Is there more? Because I think I hit the other one in the back there as well. And if so, then it was really, really efficient. Really efficient. But I think I hear some more. Hello! So this place is a radioactive uh, shithole, but... There's one specific item I really want to have here. Ooh, and there's lots of bottles here as well. This is amazing. I kind of didn't know that because, of course, I'm not looking at bottles in a normal playthrough. This is awesome. That was like 10 bottles. Uh, over there is uh, dog meat. Dog meat. Ah, there you are. Hello, dog meat. Um, can you pick that fusion core up over there? Because it's really radioactive over there. And I just want to have that. And you're you're a dog. Oh, wow. You can even telekinesis that to your mouth for some reason. And yeah. Thank you, dog meat. Thank you for that. So that we have a fusion core that we now don't need to go and get in the radioactive stuff. Um, there's one more. Food. That's always nice. And Molotov cocktail. I don't want to shoot that. That's gas. That's going to explode. But I think there's... Uh, we can go even deeper. And I can probably sneak attack kill one of them. Like that. Oh god. That's the brute, the, the, the rabid one. Shoot it. Shoot it. Shoot it again. There we go. It's down. And that was the only one. I don't think it even hit me. Because while you're in VATS, you actually have a lot more defense than you would normally have. And I think we're pretty much fine now. But there is a safe here, and I don't know... Yeah, it's novice locked, so here we go. There we go, 45 rounds. Not that interesting, but might as well take that. And a mine. A mine, that's gonna come in handy. Ooh, and a leather right leg. That's our first bit of component armor. Revolver rifle. Takes 0.45 ammo. Oh, but it's so heavy. Wait a second. I did get... I did get the 50 extra. Doesn't dog meat count as a companion? Are you not a companion? He's looking at me like he doesn't know what I'm saying, but... Are, do, do you not count as a companion? That is weird. Wait a second. I'm, I want to test that out. Because I'm going to head back to Sanctuary anyway. But... 
Yeah, I really want to test that out. Let's go out again. So, dog meat. Psst. Can you, um... How you doing, buddy? Go to, um... Wait, wait. No, no. No, I was talking, right? Let's yeah. Stay safe, buddy. So, you can go to... You know what? Right over here. Yes. So, the dog. Do dog. It's dog meat, but we know, we know this is dog meat, right? So, dog meat is now going to over there. So I don't have a companion right now, and I still have 155 carry capacity. I mean, I did take Lone Wanderer, right? I, I just want to check. Yeah. But I have I have the dog. Wait, and if I now just say dog meat. Hey boy. Dog meat. Uh you wanna let's go. Come on, boy. It's time to go. There we go. So now I have dog meat again, and if I check my inventory. I'm still at 155. You don't count as a companion. That's a bit rude of the game. Um, but with that done, we've uh, made ourselves two little outposts. And we can start going out in the wider world. So that's the first bit of Fallout 4 survival with Louise. Louise. Louise is really keen on going further, as am I. But uh, thank you guys enormously for watching. I'm going to take a little break. So thank you guys enormously for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, let me know what you think about the series in the comment section. If you prefer me going further into the Gunless playthrough, let me know as well. Because uh, otherwise I can actually choose. But if there's no comments on this video pointing me towards Gunless again, I'm going to go with the survival challenge. So we're going to continue this series with an episode every week. So, okay. Thank you guys for your feedback. And enormously for watching as well. So see you guys. God damn it, I'm parched from lack of water. Uh, see you guys next time. Goodbye.